Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Alexander Nesev, Hector Bones, and Tim Ashman. Coming up on DTNS, watch OS 9 and iOS 16 arrive September 12th, followed by new iPhones, watches, and AirPods Pro. We're going to talk about all that. Plus, tracking your face is the next wave in virtual reality. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 7th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. Out of Atlanta, this is Terrence Gaines. And also out of Atlanta, Nika Monfort. I'm somewhere, but I'm the show's producer, Roger <laughs> Chang. Indeed, we got a packed house today for the Apple announcement, so let's start right with some tech things you should know. Huawei announced the Mate 50 and Mate 50 Pro phones, both offering typical Android flag flagship specs, with the Pro offering a 120 hertz OLED display. The standard Mate 50 has a 90 hertz OLED. While both offer only 4G cell connectivity, they are the first phones to support China's Beidou satellite network, which allows for sending short texts and uses navigation without a cell signal. Both are available now with the Mate 50 starting at 4,999 won, which is about 718 US dollars. The 50 Pro starts at 6,799 won. Ring doorbells began rolling out support for end-to-end -end encryption for the battery-powered version of not only the doorbells, but also the camera. It introduced this feature on its hardware devices in July 2021 hardwired devices in July 2021. This makes video footage from the devices only available on enrolled iOS or Android devices. Using end-to-end -end encryption disables video previews, notifications with video snapshots, and sharing footage to third-party apps and devices. Qualcomm refreshed its mid-range and entry-level mobile systems on a chip with the Snapdragon 6 Gen 1 and Snapdragon 4 Gen 1. Both SOCs will use ARM's Cortex A78 CPUs for their performance cores, but won't use the ARM V9 architecture like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Qualcomm says the 6 Gen 1 should offer 40% better multi-threaded CPU performance and up to 25% better GPU performance than its predecessor. The 4, the 4 Gen 1 will offer 15% better CPU and up to 10% better GPU performance than its last gen chip. Albania's Prime Minister Edi Rama said the country cut diplomatic ties with Iran, citing a major cyber attack in July that shut down several Albanian government services and websites. Rama said an investigation showed, quote unquote, undeniable evidence that the attack was orchestrated and sponsored by the Islamic Republic of Iran. The security firm Mandian expressed moderate confidence in, in their words that the attackers acted in support of Tehran's anti-dissident efforts. Well, some people have been waiting for it, and we're getting it in some form anyway. Twitter confirmed a TechCrunch report that its upcoming Edit Tweets feature for Twitter Blue subscribers will let users edit a tweet up to five times within 30 minutes of posting. The company said this number could change based on user behavior, which... I don't know why you would want to do that five times in 30 minutes, but whatever. Twitter will first roll out the feature to blue subscribers in New Zealand, later coming to Australia, Canada, and the U.S. All right, let's talk a little more about VR before we get into the Apple announcement. Scott, what do we got? Sure. Uh, headsets on, everybody. Meta announced it will hold its Connect conference and live stream it on October 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern. So jot it down if you're interested. Connect is held for AR and VR developers. Meta only said it will talk about what's to come in the near and far future. But CEO Mark Zuckerberg had said previously that the company would launch a new VR headset in October. So I guess we'll see. In any case, expect to get more details on its high-end project, Cambria headsets, and the Horizon Worlds VR app. Uh, elsewhere in the VR world, HTC announced a $99 facial tracker for the Vive Focus 3, as well as a 249 eye tracker. Both are available now. Yeah, so Meta's Project Cambria is supposed to come with eye and facial tracking. So HTC looks to be getting a little bit of a jump on Meta here. HTC announced a $99 facial tracker for the Vive Focus 3, as well as a $249 eye tracker, both available now. Yeah, so if you're not unclear, it's a $99 HTC facial tracker and a $249 eye tracker, both available now. Uh, let's, let's actually talk about these. The facial tracker uses a single camera with a 60 hertz tracking 
great to capture your lips, your jaw, your cheeks, your chin, your teeth, your tongue, kind of mimic those in order to replicate your expressions and mouth movements on virtual avatars. Has a response time of less than 10 milliseconds, so pretty close, not much lag, uh, and only adds 11.6 grams to the weight, so not a lot of a uh, lot of weight. Plugs into the Vive Focus's uh, USB-C port, though, so it is going to take up that port. Well, the eye tracker has a dual camera system, as you might expect, that can track direction, origin, blinks, pupil size, and position. It adds 54 grams and attaches magnetically. It can be used to tell you where you're looking, but also replicate realistic eye activity. And the biometric data, he uh, uh, the sensors can be integrated into apps using Vive Wave SDK. That development kit will get that. According uh, upcoming Open XR support as well as Unity Unreal Game Engine and native integration. So some nice little upgrades. Yeah, I mean it's nice if you're if you're into the metaverse. Yeah, I you know I, I again hey, hey, I, I'm not going to be a naysayer before trying trying some of the stuff out. I am a MetaQuest user, uh, an enthusiastic one. But yeah, it's it's that replicating me thing. I. I, uh, I'm not sure what apps I'm using in Don't VR Don't fight yet. the future, Sarah. I'm it's, just saying. <laughs> you got to have the saying. sensors first, then the developers make the stuff, and then you go, oh, um, that's how it works. Yeah, that's great. That's, right? That's so the next time I'm doing VR exercise and I'm like blinking uncontrollably because I'm sweating <laughs> so badly, I'll know. Uh, yeah, everybody's trying to make social <laughs> happen. So we'll see if they succeed. If you're feeling social, uh, you can get in touch with us. You don't even need an avatar. You don't need to trap trap your nose or anything uh just go to twitter dtns show is our handle there or instagram dtns picks dtns p-i-x Let's talk Apple Watch first. The Apple Watch SE is now the bargain model at $249 or $299 with cellular. Uh, the Apple Watch Series 8 adds a temperature sensor, which can be good for a lot of things, but Apple emphasized its role in tracking ovulation for those trying to get pregnant. Uh, it also has added crash detection to the watch, so there's an improved gyroscope and accelerometer that, uh, with little machine learning, can detect a car crash. And then it'll count down to 10 before all automatically calling emergency services. Uh, it also has added international roaming support to the Series 8, has 18 hours of battery life, 36 in low power mode. That's pretty similar to what it was before. And the price is $399 or $499 if you want the cellular connection. Both the Series 8 and the SE are available now, shipping September 16th. They announced another big new watch, and by big, I mean literally the thing is huge. Uh, but before we get to that one, what do we think of the Series 8 and the SE? Any thoughts on these? Kind of upset that it doesn't look any different. I was looking for, I was bit into the rumors. I wanted the square, mm. the more of the edged. But uh, the crash detection and some of the other features, it's still worth it for me. Yeah, yeah uh, same for me. I am holding on to a Series 5, but last week it stopped charging. So I was very much looking forward to when this is going to be available. I too was looking for a different design, which is why I was holding on to the to the five. I was hoping, you know, maybe six and then seven came and nothing. But uh, now is the time for sure to upgrade uh, for me. And I do, um, I I do have a little bit of, of question behind, particularly on the temperature sensor, the ovulation um, part of it. The data, you know, they did mention that it is end-to-end -end, um, encryption. Um, a lot of women, um, I am a woman, but a lot of women are very aware of these type of things now, particularly with the Roe v. Wade overturning of how protected is my data. They did say it was device only. You can decide what to share and what not to share. And Apple is pretty good with um, with uh, security and privacy. But that particular thing still does have me a little bit on edge. That feature I probably won't be using, but I am, you know, definitely looking forward to the to the new watch. I was yeah, thinking that same thing uh, during the event, Nika, because once they started getting into the ovulation stuff, I was like, oh, here we go. Because a lot, you know, we've had a lot of news over the last couple of months of people saying, well, hold on a second. Who's got my data? Where's it going? Yeah. And you have to assume that Apple leaned really hard into the privacy aspect of that. Not that they wouldn't have anyway, but that was that was a big 
point of that part of the conversation. Yeah, just, sure. just if anybody d- doesn't know, it's encrypted on the device. So it's encrypted from the get go. It's only acceptable with a passcode or biometric ID. And if you do choose to sync it to iCloud, which you don't have to, it's encrypted end to end there as well. So I'm, I'm not sure what else they could do to protect it. But like you say, Nika, you still may be a little nervous about that. And that's understandable. I did really like that Hermes uh, watch band. Not oh, yeah. something I'm going to buy. Those but links. just just looked cool. Just looked really cool. I'm, I, I also, might, be, a, I might know, be alone in the audience and wondering this or hoping for this, but I was really hoping for a sub $100 entry-level base mm. functionality watch. I think that's yeah. when the market Not explodes. Not with Apple, Scott. Not, I know. It's like hoping against hope. I get it. But, but they I are still pushing wanted kids one. and family, and ninety nine dollars would be a, a, a very compelling price for kids and yeah, family if they could be. ever make it happen. It'd be I also to just, me, you know, the you whole that. eighteen hour battery life or low power mode, which I don't use very often because I like to use so many other features besides, you know, you know, kind of the, you know, giving me the time and the weather. I don't know. I mean, I'm not getting eighteen hours of battery life on on my Series Seven, uh, and I I charge it pretty religiously. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe some people don't use it as much as I do. All right. People are saying they wanted a better looking or a newer looking watch. We got one of those, right, Sarah? Yeah, we have a new Apple Watch model, everybody. It's the Apple Watch Ultra in a 49 millimeter titanium case with 2000 nits display has a bigger face. So if you were like, hey, love the Apple Watch, but I want it to be bigger and do more things, this may be the watch for you. Gets 36 hours on a charge or 60 in low power mode, so that's quite a big step up. Apple heavily targets this for outdoorsy activities. If you watch the event, they showed people mountain climbing, swimming, scuba diving even, uh, you know, all, all sorts of you know triathlon type stuff. It can do two bands of GPS, L1 and L5. It offers uh, WR100 water resistance. You can get it uh, in one of three bands, and they made a big deal about the bands. There's the canvas band, the titanium alpine, the elastometer, the titanium titanium ocean, or all cloth trail bands, all designed to withstand the elements. Every model has cellular mode, and price is set at $799, available September 23rd. I like a fat watch. I like a big, beefy, gnarly, (laughs) Garmin-sized watch. I do. I really do. Like, this is the most appealing form factor I've seen in a long time with smartwatches of any ilk, in particular the Apple Watch. I always felt like the other ones are just not my, I don't know, not my style. But I like a big, chunky watch with orange markings and Oh, and, and gnarly the, wrap. the orange oh. button is like, that's how you know. You know, you sit yeah. next to somebody at a coffee shop or maybe in a meeting and you go, Ooh, okay, what are you, a yeah. triathlete? And yeah, I did okay. that thing where I almost convinced myself I would get it because I said, oh, this will be like 1500 bucks." And they got to the end and said, all right, starting at seven ninety nine. I went, oh, maybe I can justify it, even though why would I? Why would I ever do that? I was just asking for a $100 watch and well, suddenly I want this $800 watch. And I, watch. I feel like I saw lots of, you know, because I, I love to follow Twitter during Apple announcements, as we all do, and so much chatter about people saying, well, all I do is sit around and blog. I don't need this. And I think that the outdoorsy stuff, you're you're going to use some of those features or you're not going to. The capability, though, of the watch is pretty unparalleled. It's it's a nice watch. Yeah, yeah. well, I was going to say, unlike some of the other devices that Apple has, period, this is one of those devices, this Apple Watch Ultra, to where people can specifically, clearly say, I need this or I don't need it. Out of all the other devices, you can kind of, well, for me, <laughs> I can talk myself into pretty much any device Apple sells. But this one is kind of like, Clearly, I'm not the target audience for this device, so I'm either not going to get it or I do all these things. All these things can come in handy or at least very one or two or three of these things come in handy. I need this watch. This has zero uh, appeal to me. <laughs> I don't do any of these activities. <laughs> and it's very it, it, it looks they, they said it's for the explorer. And it looks like it's for the Explorer. It's very rugged looking. It looks like if you're out on a trail and you take a spill or you knock it up against something, it'll take the hit and keep on moving because it does. It looks like it could it could take a punch, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a chunky little watch, uh, right? This is a competitor to Garmin. 
If you've never considered buying a, a top-level Garmin uh, watch for outdoorsy stuff, this is not for you. This this is for for somebody who likes to go diving, go hiking, climb mountains, be outside. In fact, Roger pointed out uh, uh, to me that it's it's really good for uh, people in emergency services, uh, first responders, EMTs, firemen, uh, Coast Guard. If you're going to be doing searches out in wildlands or fighting fires, that kind of stuff. This is this is one of the most niche. Apple products I think I may have ever seen. At the same time, I, I know at least a couple people who have, because I'm somewhat new to the Apple Watch ecosystem, just a few months in now, people saying, you know, but I, you know, I've kind, kind of got big wrists. I would really like a bigger face. Listen, you know, $800 is not necessarily what you want to spend for the bigger Apple Watch face, but that is a part of it. And I think that mm -hmm. will appeal to certain folks. Yeah, that's a good point. Especially, I mean, $800 is a lot, but it's also not th as much as it could have been if you just want a big face. And I think for some people <laughs> who want a big face on their watch, I should clarify, uh, <laughs> that, that, that could be worth it. You're right. Yeah. I was expecting uh, it to be much more. In yeah, price. I yeah. I was thinking twelve. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, at the least. I was surprised that at the price. Me. Yeah, the price. I think it's competitive in that market. Um, seeing what some of these garments go for, and I'm with Tom. It just seems like a fascinating aim to to go after that particular. I would assume kind of niche market compared to like you know the the, the main watch market, which is already a little niche when it comes to smartwatches. So yeah, I don't know that the, that one. Even though it was rumored, still came out came out of nowhere for me a little bit. We also got new AirPods Pro uh, with a new H2 chip uh, to improve active noise cancellation. Uh, there's a little bit of better dr driver to improve the audio. A new extra small ear tip along with the other three you get. So maybe the, it'll fit a little better in smaller ears. Uh, Apple added swipe controls to the stems. So you have both swipe and force touch depending on what you want to use. You can also now charge it with your Apple Watch and MagSafe chargers now. And the case has a speaker and U1 chip, so you can find it if it's lost. Uh, used to be you can only find the buds. Now you can find the case. Uh, it'll also use that speaker to do like low battery alerts or when it's fully charged, stuff like that. There's a lanyard loop on the side if you want to secure it that way. $249 available September 9th, ship in September 23rd. I'm probably going to get this because I've been waiting for new AirPods Pro, but I was surprised that they don't look any different than the old ones. Same. I I was definitely looking forward for to some new AirPod uh, Pros. I'm super excited about the extra small tip. If you see, a lot of times you'll see me kind of pop the earbud back in because it, it's, it's a bit big. So I'm looking forward to that. But I am a bit surprised that it didn't get any sort of design change. Mm -hmm. I do like the speaker on the case because for people like me who lose things all the time, trying to find it, having it to be able to ping it and actually hear the case is definitely uh, an upswing for me. No, I'm definitely interested in these as well. So much so that typically most of the time I'm reaching for my AirPods Pro. Now I also have the larger AirPods Max. I don't know if you can see that behind me, but um, I very rarely use them. I only reach for them when I can't find my AirPods Pro. So what I may end up doing is, especially since they mentioned the spatial audio and noise cancellation cancels out more audio, um, that may be equivalent. I haven't done any sort of calculations whatsoever, but if that is somewhere close in the neighborhood of the isolation for my AirPods Max, I may just sell my AirPods Max and opt for these uh, newer generation AirPod Pros. Yeah, I uh, this is a this is a product category that I actually skipped when they first announced it. Um, and part of the reason I did is it seemed like other manufacturers very quickly came to equal it with some offering of their own. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was fast. It felt like just like everybody had something way cheaper that did basically, you know, point for point feature coverage that the AirPods Pro did. So I just missed that one entirely. I am interested in this one because it does feel like a pretty big leap forward. Um, the price didn't go up in some huge way. So yeah, like I think finally the, uh, you know, the second generation, I usually don't wait. I waited this time. This is a little weird for me, but I'm excited to see these and hear them. Yeah, I don't. I don't use AirPods. I I use Jabra's um, as my wireless earbuds. Same idea. Uh, I feel like a lot of what Apple touts, and you could even I don't know, think of like HomePod announcements in the same category. They say you know best audio ever, and I think you know good audio is very important to me. It is, 
But a lot of the time, if I'm out and about using earbuds, I'm listening to podcasts. And sure, you want the audio to be nice, but the spatial audio kind of stuff is sort of lost on me unless I'm really, you know, just going to sit down and listen to Pink Floyd for the next couple of hours. So, you know, some of this does <laughs> seem like, yeah, if you want the AirPods Pro and you're, you know, and they fit your ears and all that good stuff, great. But you have other options that are a lot cheaper. Yeah. Apple also announced phones. Indeed they did, Tom. Star of the show. Uh, we were all waiting for it, even though the watch stuff went on for quite a bit this morning. The iPhone 14 is a 6.1 inch, and the 14 Plus is a 6.7 uh, inch version of the phone. So bigger than ever, everybody. It sticks yeah. with the A15 Bionic chip for both mm. models. The camera's improved with a 12 megapixel main camera with an f1.5 aperture. Front facing camera also has autofocus, which is actually kind of funny. I thought that it already did. Uh, also has a larger aperture, so, you know, selfie lovers, you'll look better than ever. Something called the Photonic Engine uses deep learning so you can take better low light photos. Something Apple touts quite often, whether you're a photographer or not, these things will come in handy. Video gets an image stabilization, uh, stabilization feature called action mode as well. Uh, the phone can handle crash detection, much like the new uh, watches. The US version will only get eSIM versions. So you don't have a physical SIM tray. Some people out there were saying, yay, I hated those. Other people saying, uh-uh, if I travel, I want that physical SIM tray. That eSIM thing is gonna lock us in more than ever. Kind of depends on how you live your life. Big reveal though, with satellite connectivity for emergencies. So what you do is you point it at the right part of the sky, the phone is designed to help you do that within the app. You're, you're not supposed to just know where satellites are above you. Then you can send short messages or answer pre-prepared emergency questions if you happen to be in a situation where you need to get a hold of somebody. It takes about 15 seconds to send a message in a clear sky or minutes if that sky is partially obstructed. Satellite support launches in November. Uh, it's free for two years uh, if you go ahead and purchase one of these new phones. And Fitness Plus is coming to the iPhone for those who don't have an Apple Watch, and I have some questions about that because I'm not always holding my phone when I'm doing fitnessy things. Uh, iPhone 14 starts at $799. 14 Plus starts at $899. Pre-orders start September 9th. Shipping September 16th for the 14 and October 7th for the Plus. Yeah, that, it's that true depth camera on the on the front that, that's getting the autofocus. I think that that may be what's new uh, there. But ah, I'm yeah, also okay. curious on the Fitness Plus. Does that mean I can just, you know, like I can if I own an Apple Watch and subscribe to Fitness Plus, you can do some stuff on the phone that's just watching, like stretching uh -huh. and stuff. Yeah. Is that all this is? Why did it take until now to get that if that's all it is? I'm, very, I'm curious about that too. I, well, my guess is there's probably also some tracking stuff you could do as well maybe. while holding the phone, like running but, or I don't know. Before I had an Apple Watch, I was like, I mean, Apple Fitness Plus is, I mean, why would I ever pay for it? Like, I need an Apple Watch. And I get why. If, for example, I'm doing one of my VR workouts that can connect to the watch, you know, you get my heart rate, calories burned, all sorts of stuff. If I'm not holding my phone while doing the same exercise, which I wouldn't. You'll be watching it on your Apple TV. But with I've, the phone strapped to you with a, a handy arm. thing that you bought at the Apple store for $12.99. Right. Yeah. And maybe yeah, it's 6.7 inches. Like a yeah. uh, like having a small television attached to your hip at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and one of the biggest things of Apple Fitness Plus is you get to see on the screen what's going on on your watch. Right. So it's, it's very. How are you going to be able to track? You know how many calories you're burning? I mean, you just out. aren't. Very Let's not get too too distracted at this though, because we got satellite <laughs> connectivity, folks. Everybody yeah. wanted satellite connectivity. We yeah, that's got what I. I I thought it was funny that Apple's like, RCS messaging, yeah, we're not going to connect to that. But satellites, though, that's, that's what we the want. key. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. no, no joke. This is this is good if you're if you need it, right? If you if you're stuck in an area where you need to send an emergency message, it's a little kludgy in that you have to hold your phone. So you can't be in a situation where you can't use your arms, right? Because you're gonna have to move it around to get it pointed at the satellite. It doesn't automatically connect. Uh, but if you need that message to go out, uh, then you're gonna want that. You're gonna want the ability to do that. Uh, this is a very complex and I would imagine not cheap 
system for Apple to be a part of, and they're giving it to you for two years for free with purchase. So you notice um, they didn't tell you how much it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. they didn't. They they're assuming the price. Gonna they buy just said it was free. Years. Free, for, buy a new free one for two years, years. Yeah. just mm-hmm. enough for you to, you know, so much of this is like, it, it kind of felt like Apple was really leaning into like, your life is in danger. <laughs> yes. We're going to help you <laughs> any way that we can. And we've built in lots of stuff that maybe you'll never need. Hopefully not. But if you do, we've got it. Yeah, we I got kid, you covered. Yeah. I kid All you right. not. I'm watching TV every night and there's always a news story. Somebody's rescued. They got to send the helicopter in. So yeah. it's like, well, there's your look. problem. You're watching the news. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> and the opening stories with the Apple watch with the different people in the different scenarios, know, right? Oh, where yeah, it came yeah. in handy. I was like, this is kind of drab Dark. to open yeah. it up, right? Yeah. It yeah. felt like if you use an Apple Watch, you're going to be in trouble, folks. You're going to have a heart attack. You'll be in a car <laughs> crash. The woman like, who said, my dad crash. and I, yeah, we crashed our plane. Thank you. Yeah. I was wearing my watch. Before we get our, our, our thoughts on the iPhones in general, let's let's pick up on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. Uh, these are the ones with the 30% smaller notch that is now called Dynamic <laughs> Island. And I, for one, love that name. Love it. Uh, I also love what they're doing with it. They're basically taking the notch uh, and putting a little bit of a screen in the middle of it, right? So it's it's separated into two chunks, and they're using that screen and the screen around it to center notifications that will animate in and out of it to make it look like a little notification dock. So it no longer looks like a problem in the screen. It looks intentional. Uh, the Pro and the Pro Max have a new chip, unlike the the other, the 14 and the Plus. Uh, the Pro and the Pro Max have an A16 Bionic. They have a 48 pe- megapixel camera with quad pixel sensors. Uh, it can use different sensor modes for different photos. So you can do things like 12 megapixel binned photos. So you can you can combine those pixels and capture more light. A lot of things you can do with 12 megapixel in this bigger sensor. Uh, it also has 2x zoom at a 48 meter focal length. Uh, cinematic mode can now do four. 4K 30 frames per second and 4K 24 frames per second. The Pro is starting at $999. The Max starts at $1,099. Storage up to a terabyte, though it's going to be more expensive at a terabyte. Uh, You can pre-order this September 9th, available September 13th. All right, so we got four new iPhones as usual. Uh, Who's buying one? Well, I skipped a year, so it's time. Mm-hmm. I've never done that before. I've always gone the year and do the you know the payment thing and not just basically I rent my phone. So I've always done it. But this last time I was like, this 13 just does not look like that big a jump for the tw- from the 12. I'm going to stick with this. It'll be fine. To be honest, outside that island and some photo stuff, it's not that different than last year's either. So, But the a island bit, is a big deal. It's kind of cool. Like what they're doing with it is very cool because you got to have your physical holes and you got to cover them up. So they're doing that. And at the same time saying, look, instead of just having something covered, let's make it useful there. That oh, space sure. can be more than just a place to cover the, the places we need our cameras I mean, and our mics or whatever. And so they do that. And I love it. And it's cool, but I also know that next year, the 15, the standard 15s will have it. And they're holding that back because it's a sales. Don't forget that 48 megapixel sensor. That's a a big deal. It's a big deal. You're right. You're right. I mean, as somebody who's never been a notch hater, I just, it's just something I don't see. I don't care. But, but if you do, this is genius. Oh, yeah. Um, I saw some comparisons to, you know, the Mac line of touch bars that (laughs) came and went and were beloved by some, but... Not many. No, this is so better than that. Now, it, I have, it, I have, it remains to be seen how how great this is going to be. But it I seems have moved like a to Dynamic way. Island. I live on Dynamic Island now. As a person who <laughs> loved, as love a Island. person who actually loved the Touch Bar, I'm actually I loving the Dynamic Island as well. I miss my scrubbing. I'll be honest, scrubbing through videos. That's the one thing. But anyway, um, I'm getting more into iPhone photography as well. So I'm definitely looking to step up my camera game so this having the better cameras um this having that new feature with the dynamic island uh i'm all in even though i currently have the 13 so i'm going to move up a year uh and step up my game a little bit and i'm in the same boat as scott i have the 12 pro and I didn't upgrade to the 13 because it didn't seem a big enough leap for me. So it's definitely time. Uh, I too am on Dynamic Island. I think the name is fantastic and the look and the feel 
is the same. I also caught, I don't know if you guys heard it, there was a little bit of A16 chip shade to some of the other manufacturers, them mentioning that uh, they are still, their competitors are still trying to mimic the performance of the A13. And it's like, well, we're on 16 and they're still trying to to pick up what we're doing on the 13. I yeah. thought that was pretty funny, but I, I'm, I'm all in on, on the 14 Pro if you as well. Name, if you name one of the competitors and give me a chart that actually has like numbers to tell me what you're talking about, I, I'll take that shade a little more seriously. But they always say like 50% better than a competitor, but they're like, okay, but which competitor? Because, you know, if it's a low end one plus from 10 years ago, well, of course you're going to have 50%. Uh, they don't want to so. give them that extra shine. It's like, no, we can't yeah, mention our yeah, competitors. No, I, get it, I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, and don't forget the always on screen. Yeah. Amos is, uh, is pinging me uh, in chat. The always on screen on this uh, and, and still claiming 36 hour battery life. Uh, you know, or, or still cl- not 36 hours, but still claiming, you know, decent battery life. So um, yeah, the, the that, that will quotes, be interesting to see what actually happens. Yeah. The actual quotes again was always, what what it say? All day battery life. That's right. All day. <laughs> however long your day is. Yeah. yeah. Your mileage. Be, it's hours, not like a Jupiter gotcha. day. Yeah, like an yeah. Earth Day, we're okay. <laughs> a, Mer- a Mercury Day. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, before we go, uh, we we want to check the mailbag real quick. We asked everybody yesterday uh, about their upgrade cycle. What what makes them upgrade? How often do they upgrade? So thanks to everybody. We got so many good emails from folks. Uh, we're just going to pick one to highlight uh, for today. We might read more in the future, though. What do we got, Sarah? Byron wrote in and said, I usually upgrade when the devices support apps. It happened with my iPad Gen 1, iPad Gen 3, and next will be my iPhone 6S when the new Apple iPhones are released. (laughs) Byron wrote this before today. I did have to upgrade to an iPad Pro 12.9 M1 when my iPad Pro 12.9 needed to be fixed, and I couldn't be without an iPad for too long. Byron says, I gave up on an inexpensive Android tablet since the manufacturers would barely support them for more than a year. The last one was an Amazon Fire tablet I just use for testing now on the few apps that uh, that don't have an iOS version. All right. Uh, well, folks, if you are free Thursday, September 8th, right before DTNS is live, 3 p.m. Eastern time, I'm going to be on a free and publicly available panel with actual scientists to talk about how memory makes it harder to fight COVID-19. Uh, talking about everything we've learned in contact tracing and all these things and the, the exposure notification system. They got one of the folks who worked on the Apple Google exposure notification system. Uh, and we're going to talk about all of that. The panel is part of the Association for Psychological Sciences Global Collaboration on COVID-19. So get the link from our show notes or head to psychologicalscience.org and I will talk to you right before DTNS tomorrow, uh, Thursday, September 8th, 3 p.m. Eastern. Well, thanks to everybody for being uh, on the show for the Apple announcement. Always a fun day, even if you don't like Apple stuff. It's just, you know, you got stuff to talk about. We'll start with you, Scott Johnson. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Well, if you're looking for podcasts that cover all sorts of stuff, including um, something a little ancillary to tech, which is gaming, which we talk about here occasionally when stories come up, you might like something over at the Frog Pants Network. Check us out at frogpants.com. Check out all the podcasts. Find something right for you. That's frogpants.com. And I'm Scott Johnson on Twitter if you want to find me personally. Excellent. Uh, well, one half of the Snob OS podcast who loves Apple stuff, Terrence Gaines. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, definitely they can find me and my other half, Nika, on the Snob OS cast. Go to www.snoboscast.com. We record on Thursdays. We uh, Episodes come out on Fridays. There you'll get more in-depth of the Apple announcements. You know, we love coming on DTNS, but we got to get in there and get our zings in there quick. But if you want to <laughs> <laughs> listen to an extended version and get all the info information, all the insights, all of the recap, uh, definitely check us out there. Well, speaking of the other half of Snob OS, Nika Monford, always good to have you on the show as well. Let folks know where they can keep up with you. Absolutely. As Terrence mentioned, you can definitely check us out on the website and hit us up on Snob OS Cast on Twitter. You can find me personally over on Twitter at Tech Savvy Diva. Well, we have a brand new boss to thank, Robert. Robert, don't know if you were watching the Apple announcement today, but you just started backing us on Patreon. So we want to give you a big old round of applause. Yeah, Robert, Robert is Robert brought you the Apple coverage today, right? That that's that's how well timed yeah, Robert was. Well done, Robert. Thank you for <laughs> yes. that. 
Roberts, couldn't do without you. Uh, We couldn't do without any of our patrons. Uh, Speaking of patrons, stick around for our extended show, Good Day Internet. We'll be talking in more detail about how we feel about Apple announcements in general and what we like and don't like and what we might buy. But just a reminder, DTNS is live. You can catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. If you'd like to join us live, we'd love to have you. More information at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back to it all again tomorrow with Justin Robert Young joining us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>